everybody, it's me, Zach. This is Potato, and welcome back to our channel. Hey everybody, it's me, Zach, and I am back reporting for duty at the Amberlynn Reed <laughs> Reaction Factory. Thank you all so much for the lovely support on yesterday's video. I'm actually kind of surprised. I have a history of doing little silly troll parody video situation types of deals. But I don't know that any of them have ever performed as well as that video did. So I really genuinely appreciate all the support. Sorry to everybody who I faked out with with the like acting. Listen, I did community theater in high school. I was in, in all the musicals in high school. I do have a history of acting, <laughs> but not professionally. I'm just here to troll. But I just want to remind everybody that I am the boss over here. So we will be wearing our boss trucker hat just just so that there's no confusion about who's who's running the show over here at the Amberlynn Reed Reaction <laughs> Channel Factory. God, I feel so silly. Amberlynn did post a new video today. She's very good at keeping consistent consistent with her every other day video schedule right now. And it does appear to be a little like being interviewed by you video. You know, she said she was going to do that and the P.O. Box stuff all in separate videos. And sure enough, that's what we got today. So I'm going to give you a timestamp down below for if you just want to watch my reaction to that. I also have some, some Q&A highlights from Destiny's Instagram, as well as a few Q&A highlights from Amber Lynn's Instagram that I just want to comment on as well. So if you want to skip over any of that, feel free to find the timestamps in the description box. Let's start with Destiny's Instagram, because if y'all thought <laughs> that Amber Lynn could spend some time answering some fucking questions on Instagram. Literally, Destiny answered so many, and I'm gonna be honest with you, will not be covering all of them by any means. I, in fact, I think I only screenshotted like four of them. Here's the thing about her Instagram right now and or her social media presence in general. It's clear for whatever the motivation, she wants to answer some questions about Amberlynn and get some internet points for that, I think. I think she probably does want some views, some money, some coins from YouTube views and videos because she keeps teasing that future videos will have Amberlynn read tea in them. But she does say, quite a few times throughout the Instagram Q&As is that she just wants to get her story out there as well, which I'm sure it's a little bit of all of it. You know what I'm saying? Like I said in my last reaction video that I did about Amberlynn, I think, you know, the difference between Amberlynn continuously talking about her exes and her exes choosing to talk about her in whatever way they want to, the difference is, is that Amberlynn has always had her side of the story told on the internet, right? Like, from when they were dating to after the fact, like she's always told her side of the story. We've always had that and she's always shared it like ad nauseum and or brought it up just to shit on people like Becky and things like that. I do think to some extent it's fair to hear the other side of the story. I also think you can put that side of the story into context that like, at least when it comes to Destiny, it's been like a long time <laughs> since Destiny was relevant on Amberlynn's like actual YouTube channel. In fact, like so many people were asking her in the Q and A's about like wifey and things like that. And it's like, why would Destiny know anything about that, right? Because that's how long ago Destiny was actually in the picture. Also, I can't help but feel like I look like my father <laughs> with this hat on. I just caught a glimpse of myself at the little viewfinder thing over there, and I'm like, should I take this off? It's giving a little, a little too much, like, straight white dad from rural Midwest Illinois. <laughs> and I'm feeling kind of uncomfy. Yeah, I think I'm gonna take it off, but don't forget, I'm the boss. So let's just jump into these questions. Somebody said, do you think Amber is doing a Q&A at the same time to draw attention away from you? And Destiny said, she blocked me on Insta, but I don't care. And I have to say one, Amber Lynn is always doing an Instagram Q&A, so, so to say that she would be doing it to take away from Destiny, 
I think is silly. I, I think she would be doing it regardless. But I guess maybe the more interesting thing here to note is that she has Destiny blocked on Instagram. That feels a little weird to me uh, because I'm not even blocked on Instagram <laughs> anymore. And we also did see that screenshot that Destiny shared literally just like the other day where Amberlynn had reached out to her on some kind of platform. And like I said, she does answer or show a lot of questions that were about wifey. If anything, like one, it's there's no information, right? She doesn't share any. So like in this example, somebody says, do you think that wifey is actually actually Amber's caretaker. Destiny's response is, who knows? And I just think like, to even just put something out there, like put out that question when you have nothing to add to it. If anything, it's shady. <laughs> anything it's shady because why include that whatsoever why entertain questions like that if you don't know anything about it unless you want to imply or be shady to people and suggest that like yeah there could be a possibility there could be a possibility because she's not saying no she's not saying yes she's just saying who knows it could be she, it, wifey could be another thing that i think is so fascinating is somebody said based on amber lynn's reputation do you think she's a flat earth and Destiny said, yes, LMAO. And that does strike me as funny because I don't remember what era it was that Amber Lynn said she was a flat earther or believed that the earth was flat. She these days says that that was just like her trolling and she was just joking and never being serious. But it's not lost on me that Destiny could believe that Amber Lynn would believe that the earth was flat. Oh, and then I do have this... <laughs> this screenshot, but it's actually not tea or anything. She just said in a response to somebody that she plays Fortnite online, and my screenshot tells on me because I totally did message her. And I said, Destiny, bestie, when are, when are we gonna squad up? When are we gonna squad up, bestie? Let's get some number one victory royales. I do play a lot of Fortnite, in case you didn't know. Well, a lot is subjective, but I do play Fortnite. It's one of my favorite video games. So that's the, it. Uh, like I said, there were just a lot of questions where it was like, Destiny, why are you answering these questions when you have nothing to add? Like, you're clearly saying you don't know anything about that, but then, like, putting out that people are asking these shady questions about wifey, about Amberlynn, about whoever, whatever. I don't know. I just think it's all interesting. I'm curious what kind of tea Destiny could potentially even have at this point to share. There was one I didn't take a screenshot of, but she said that she was going to talk more about if she thinks Amberlynn is manipulative in a future video or vlog. Um, so I think that could potentially be interesting. I don't know if that's tea because that would be I mean, mostly I think maybe just her opinion or her based on her experience, which is important, but like, I don't, I'm curious like if she has receipts or if there's going to be stories, examples of how Amberlynn is or is not manipulative. But speaking of Amberlynn being manipulative... <laughs> Um, let's talk about her Instagram Q&A, shall we? So I already covered the Instagram Q&A where she talked about being my boss. I don't have a lot more to say about that. I, you know, I think it's so interesting that she thinks that I report to her. I mean, I definitely do rely on her her content to make content on my channel, although not exclusively. I do cover other people, as you can tell just by clicking on my channel. I, I think it's funny that she thinks that I would report to her as though, like, E! News reports to the celebrities they cover, or, like, if a sports commentator who covers football games reports to the football teams that they cover, you know? I don't think that it exactly works like that. One thing that I thought was interesting is that somebody did follow up and ask, like, what kind of test that she got that was detecting the hernia. And her response was, it was the one I did where I had to fake cough and fake poop, lol. I didn't get the test to see if I had a hernia. It was a standard test that had to be done before getting weight loss surgery. They happened to see the hernia during that test though. Which I remember this so well. I remember this so well because my reaction to that video where she was talking about having to fake poop or fake fart or something like that, I literally in my video was like trying to do the fake fart, fake poop. I'm like, what does that even look like? Like how does one fake fart or fake poop? And then you're going to have to fake poop and then you're going to have to roll on your sides. How, how, how exactly does one fake poop? 
I'm trying to think, like, I'm trying to, I'm trying to fake poop right now. <laughs> Does that, can you tell? <laughs> can you tell? And I haven't fact checked yet. I'll fact check while I'm editing, but that was a long time ago. So she's potentially been sitting with this hernia for a while, besties. And I also just have to say that, it, again, this is why everything that she says when it comes to her medical history, medical health, medical updates, medical whoever, whatever, is so convoluted and confusing. Because in the last video where she talked about the hernia, she said that they specifically did do a test just for a hernia and they just never got back to her about it. A few months ago, just took a test to see if I have one and I never got my results back. Like, no one ever, like, called me to, like, tell me my results. And so I figured, okay, so I guess everything's in the clear because if something would have showed up, they would have told me. And then she just magically came up with this idea that she thought she had a hernia, so she called them to check in on the results of her hernia test. So I ended up calling to get my results because I never was told my results. And it turns out I do have a hernia, folks. And... The fact that I like knew that before being told that. So it's interesting now that she's saying that this was just like a general test where they happened to find a hernia because if she didn't even know what a hernia was and had to ask wifey what it meant, then how did she even know that that was a test that she had already had done that could have led to an answer of her having a hernia without them telling her that she had a hernia for months? Bessie's, I don't know, it's just like, <laughs> You know, you know, you know. That shit's just not adding up. I hate to tell you, Amberlynn. The math, I'm doing it. I was a math major. I ended up getting a math minor because math is actually kind of hard, but I did get a math minor and I'm, I'm just telling you the math isn't adding up. Shit is not adding up. In addition to that, <laughs> question about the hernia. Somebody said, hi Amber, did you get your hernia from coughing slash walking pneumonia? And Amber Lynn said, I don't think so. I think I know how I got it. I'll explain it in the future video because it's so hard to explain. So, you know, I, I guess I'm just letting you know this because old Dr. Lynn medicine woman with her, her medical degree from the University of Grey's Anatomy, she's gonna come here and let y'all know how she got the hernia, okay? She, she's gonna come and let, let us all know in a future video because it's so hard to explain. I <sighs> can't wait for that. <laughs> can't wait for that. And the last one I'll cover or have a screenshot of at least is somebody asking, would you ever consider adding dates to videos? No hate, sometimes it's confusing without. And her response was, there's nothing to be confused about. Everything I upload is in chronological order. I've been a pretty big proponent of like, Hey, if she wants to pre-record videos that's very chill, I get it. It helps her stay consistent with posting. It helps her stay on top of things. But I've also always said that the only time I have major issue with it is when she's so far behind that we know about other things happening in the future and her timelines don't match up because something is happening in real life and in her videos, she's just living life as it is. And I think a, a good example of where that stuff is confusing is with all the cake gate stuff. Not to bring it up again, because you all know I'm sick to death of it. But it was so confusing because cake gate happened. She posted that video where she had her little temper tantrum over it, okay? <laughs> People were upset. She did a whole bunch of things and made a few public statements about Cakegate. And then it was like a week and a half later that we finally got a video response from her about Cakegate. And it left a whole lot of us to be like, what is going on? Like, I thought we already left that behind. And so, yeah, I do think that was confusing. It's not confusing in a lot of ways, in a lot of situations, especially with a lot of the like non-tent that Amberlynn provides, right? Like it doesn't matter if we see 
her post a, a Target haul from a month ago if nothing in the Target haul is dependent upon the time of year, right? But like, think about all the things that are coming up in her life that are gonna be on some kind of timeline. So like, you know, if we think about just the idea and concept of weight loss surgery, if she actually does have a date selected, but we continue this like pre-recorded content, it's gonna be kind of confusing if she's talking about it in other places on the internet. So I think it's fair for people to be like, oh, I'm confused at like how far behind you are. And let's also not forget that like in the past she has definitely provided dates before when people have asked. And it's just confusing because <laughs> I feel like like she, she'll sometimes do things if people ask, but if she's just not feeling like doing it, she can come up with 12 hundred reasons why like she doesn't need to do that for her channel which is fine but I think people are fair to ask for dates on videos because it does help things be less confusing it certainly puts things in perspective so it wouldn't be a video in girl world if shit didn't happen since I filmed the video which like to be fair, I only filmed this video <laughs> a few hours ago and then I left to go to the gym and work out with my trainer and I got on Instagram while I was waiting for the bus and saw all of these little Q&A answers from Miss Amber Lynn that are in regards to Destiny. And the first one, somebody said, have you been watching Destiny's Q&A tonight? And Amber Lynn's response was, no, I don't follow her on Instagram. Let me guess, she's talking about me, which is fascinating because, you know, uh, Destiny just said that Amber Lynn literally has her blocked. So it's not even a matter of Amber Lynn not following her. She literally has Destiny blocked. Another person said, Destiny is so desperate to be in a spotlight right now, acting like she's a saint, LMAO. And Amber Lynn's response was, she doesn't realize that I have tea on her, but I've chosen to keep all that shit to myself for years. Sure, I've thrown shade, but that shit was lighthearted and never out of malice. What she's doing seems to be for clout, money, and attention, and most definitely out of malice. It's just kind of weird and gross. And I find the word malice interesting because that was also a word that she threw out a lot when it came to Kate Gate and the person's intentions behind Kate Gate and things like that. I think it's like her new favorite word these days is malice. So um, interesting that she thinks Destiny's doing this out of malice. I would, I mean, I agree to some extent that she like wants some attention. She wants some views, clout, etc. I also do agree that Destiny is just sharing because she wants to put her side of the story out there. We already talked about that in this video. Another person said, I see a lot about Destiny. I can't imagine my ex using me for content, but what evs? And then Amber Lynn said, and everyone's okay with it. People are such hypocrites that it honestly just proves my point further and further. And I will say this to this point, listen, Amber Lynn used Destiny for content for years. Destiny was like a big part of her channel for years. And then even after they broke up, Amber Lynn used Destiny and Dana both for clicks and views on her channel. So like... Listen, I, I get it. I got it. She's upset because people get upset when she talks about her exes. But, like, let's not act like Amber Lynn didn't make a big chunk of money and or get her channel to where it is if it wasn't for the Destiny era of her channel. Like, people still talk about how much they love the Destiny era. Another person suggested that she fire back. I would love to hear the Destiny tea. No one is perfect. And Amberlynn said, I have tea so hot on her that everyone listening would get burned. But I am not that kind of person and I never will be no matter what. And so, I don't know. I mean, I do think she could be that kind of person, honestly. Or at least has been in the past. I don't know. She might not be now because I think she knows better. But uh, I think she could be. I think she has the capacity. I'll also say that Destiny did post an additional image on her community tab post where it looks like a Amber Lynn went in and deleted a message that she had previously sent to Destiny. I'm curious what that's about. <laughs> I don't really know. 
But it seems like there is something brewing between the girls. Anyways, I didn't realize how long I just spent talking about the Q&A stuff. So let's get into another Q&A, which is her most recent video. And it's called My Moving Plans, Old Amber Lynn, Trolling, and My Relationship Bar, being interviewed by you. I likely will just skip over things that I don't find interesting. So you may find questions just completely missing from my reaction video, uh, and that's fine. If I don't have anything to say about it, I'm not gonna include it. So if somebody asks for the 1200th time what TV shows she's watching, what's her favorite movie, boring shit like that, that like I already know the answer to because I do watch <laughs> every Amber Lynn Reed video, then I'm just gonna cut it out, all right? But we really should get to get to, cause damn, I'm already at 20 minutes on my camera. Hey guys. Hi. So welcome to a new video. I figured we would do being interviewed by you, which was also, a vlog segment that I had in my vlogs. A it is, but also <laughs> I'm so distracted by her little silhouette on, on the, the wall behind her. Cute. 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 You guys want to believe how many times I've had people contact me and say, can I interview you? Whether it be for articles or like <sighs> other people's YouTube or uh -huh. uh, podcasts, I am just very shy. <laughs> I am a very shy person. Um, I know it doesn't seem that way because I do have a YouTube channel, but I don't know. Talking to a camera, which I know will eventually be in front of a large audience, uh -huh. is very different than like talking to someone in person or like one-on-one. -on -one. I just am very shy. I I mean, I get that actually. Like, I think a lot of people just assume that if you post on the YouTubies that you're an outgoing person, but I think there's a lot of people who are introverted or shy and like talking to a camera is a very different experience than talking to humans. I also just feel like she probably doesn't want to do interviews with podcasters, YouTubers, or, uh, you know, like, news outlets. I don't, I mean, I don't know what news outlets are <laughs> reaching out to her. Actually, a news outlet a long time ago reached out to me for comment on old Amber Lynn Reed, and I think I did respond to their, their request for an interview. If I can find it, maybe I'll leave it linked, but I really can't even remember what the article was about these days. But I, I really feel like she avoids those in particular because they might ask hard questions or difficult questions that like she's not ready to answer. I also though do remember just to like, you know, maybe speak to her point is like way back in the day, Peter Mon used to always ask her to like guest with him on You Now. If you don't know what You Now is, it's I think it still exists, but it's a live streaming platform that actually Amber Lynn used to go live on all the time too. He used to always beg her to come guest on his You Now with him. And I think he finally did get her to, but she was always like, I'm just so shy. I'm just so shy. So this is not new. I just am like, also, are you just like afraid to really be held accountable also? So I figured instead of doing that I'll just give my audience the opportunity to interview me sure. so if you go to my Instagram hi I'm Bambi you can go there and hi, send I'm voice Bambi. And ask me anything you want but do make sure it's under 30 seconds just for video purposes and I know people's attention spans are kind of short 2023 TikTok's popular short form content is very much like popular nowadays. But Short form content is popular and yet this is still a 21 minute long video, which to be fair, people love my long videos. So I think, I think there's room for everything and everyone, honestly. But I also just love how she is setting this up to be something different than just like her regular Instagram Q and A's where she types out responses. Like she's making this sound like it's really something special. And the only difference is, is that she can hear the voice of the person asking the question. All right, let's get into it. Hi Amber, my name is Macy. Oh. My mother Shirley and I are huge fans of yours. We the watch your videos together all the time. Okay, um, come, come on Macy and, and Shirley. I'm just curious, what is your absolute biggest goal in your life right now through the years we've seen you lose weight have big weight loss goals move have different love interests in your life what is your biggest goal 
Is it weight loss surgery? Is it to move out of state? I mean, is it to marry Helene? I'm so curious. Thank you so much. I mean, do you not think that her biggest goal right now, see, this is why I'm just like, do y'all watch her channel? <laughs> she talks about how the most important thing to her in life right now is weight loss surgery. So like, what kind of new information are you hoping to get here? My biggest goal right now is really working on like healing myself. Oh, okay. Uh, trauma. I was that's, recently diagnosed with PTSD. That That's a, a different take on this this answer than I realized. But that, okay. I, I like a little bit of new, a little bit of new light. And that has been really hard. Therapy has been very hard. It's not just like a once a week type of deal. I have to right. deal with it every single day. <laughs> right. And it's just once a week where I get to sit down with my therapist and talk to him. But he is actively having me do a therapy type yeah. of things every single day. And I feel like it's really helping. So that is a really I mean, big goal for me right now. Obviously. Maybe I just need to be understanding because like I, I have had a lot of interaction with therapy throughout my life okay so I understand that it's a lot of work and also that therapy looks different for everybody regardless if you want to get something out of it you gotta be willing to do some work and so let me just remember that <laughs> because Amber Lynn is always on here talking about how hard it is and all I can think is like what did you expect what did you expect and and maybe that does check out specifically for Amber Lynn I think we know that she is somebody who does kind of expect everything to just come easy and and be easy and not have to put in a lot of work. But I'm just like, girly girl, what did you expect, bestie? Obviously, on top of that, weight loss, weight loss surgery, just improving my health in right. general is very, very important right. to me. Thank you so much for the support and for the question. Hey, girly pop. I was just curious as to why what? you're... Why does, that, why does that sound like Alex is shook? <laughs> Or am I, or, 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 like, am I, am I wrong? Top three songs by Banks are Much Love, Mwah. Okay, first of all, Girly Pop, that is so cute. And I don't know what it is, but I love your voice. Yeah? It's because they sound like Alex is shook and you're obsessed with Alex. <laughs> I don't know that I care what her top three Banks songs are or whatever, because I don't know that I even have ever listened to a Banks song, so I might just skip this, but that, did that... Can can I, can I get some confirmation in the, the comments that I'm not crazy? That sounded like Alex is shook. Hey, girl. So I've been following you pretty consistently um, since the pandemic started. I watch all your videos right from your channel. I don't watch them via reactors. Um, but I do have a question for you about your intentions. Because in the past, Ooh. you have mentioned that you sometimes troll. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering if you think you're more genuine these days or do you still troll a little bit? I, without a doubt, have always admitted that in the past I trolled a lot. You've always admitted? That's not true. That, the the admit, admission of it has been a like recent development in the past like year or two. But you haven't always admitted that. Because for a long time you're like, I wasn't trolling, that was serious. And it was just to add some humor to my channel. And obviously mm. I wanted views. I wanted to be able to use YouTube as my job. Like I, I wanted that sort of attention at the time. Uh, and I never wanted to you, troll in any harming way. And you, and you don't want attention now? And you don't want the views now? So I definitely never did. Um, it was always just like stupid stuff. Like I want to marry orange chicken. Like, come on now. <laughs> No, but now it wasn't that I do remember that and that was very clearly trolling. Okay, that was very clearly trolling the trolling that people are talking about that you've also taken uh, you've admitted to I guess is what I'm trying to say is the things like you uh, putting a whole bunch of cereal in a big old bowl and doing a mukbang and you said you were trolling there. And in fact, actually what really a lot of people take issue when it comes to the trolling thing, just so we're on the same page because this is my understanding of why people are upset about that example in particular is that you did it and then people are like this is nuts this is crazy and then, and then in hindsight you're like well I was trolling then but then at the time you're like no that wasn't trolling that's like what I actually do and so that's that's what we're talking about obviously the video about wanting to marry the orange chicken wasn't you being serious what is yes i am without a doubt more genuine um i've always 
clearly had a genuine side of me. Always. Clearly? So every always? Every single year that I've been on YouTube, every single video, there's always been a genuine side Always? I've always shown that. I just feel like... <laughs> always! You keep using that word, Bestie. I'm just like, I don't... I'm like looking for the times where you've always been genuine. Because that's... That's... I'm not. Yeah. You know? I... Mm. Do you feel me? Trolling isn't worth it because I realized that instead of people finding humor in it, it just created a bad taste in people's mouths, which For is sure. really unfortunate because I was never trying to create a community that hated me because I trolled. I just, I don't want that anymore. I'm gonna be honest. Now I'm afraid to be silly, to be myself, to say and do stupid things. That's who I am. That is who I am as a whole without trolling and I I you can be fun and stupid and silly and that not be the problem no nobody's mad at you for wanting to be silly <laughs> that's the I come on here I'm silly every day did you not just see my video from yesterday it's okay to be a goofy goober that's way different than what the things you were trolling about and why people can't take you seriously and they don't know if you're being genuine or honest the point is just flying right over her head. She is missing it. I just feel like because of my past and my troll era, like no one really takes me seriously. Right. Um, exactly. I had a recently where the whole thing was just like total genuine. People were saying how the whole thing was a troll. And I'm just like, ooh. We're at a time where if you think I'm trolling, maybe it's because you want me to be. Because I am like, I feel like I'm so detached from... <laughs> old Anne Boleyn and like <laughs> yes we want you to be a troll it's it's us it's us it always it always comes back to us like literally this person this person that asked this question went on to even say that they don't even watch her through reaction channels they watch her through her channel enjoy her content and asked her a sincere question about like, hey, I understand you have this reputation about being a troll. Like, how, how do you feel about that? Like, are you being genuine now? And even then, in her response to this question from this person who seemingly does seem to be a genuine fan of hers, she's like, well, I think it's all that you just want me to be a troll. And maybe she wasn't directing that part of her answer to the person that asked the question and just like to her larger YouTube audience. But the reality is that she was answering that question from that person and, and that's where we have gotten to in this. It's it's you. It, maybe, maybe if you think I'm trolling, maybe that's just because that's what you want me to be doing. Jesus. The ways that I would go about my YouTube channel is like so different now while still filming the same content. I just feel like uh -huh. I'm more genuine to open up more and I'm trying to show less of the freak show aspects of what people have always wanted to see. It's just in the past, I just felt so like I had to be like this trolly freak show version of myself because I felt like that's what got me the more views. But you've, that's what but you've, but you've always been genuine. You've always been genuine, Amberlynn. It seems like my audience wanted, and it's just really confusing now because it's like, people are like, we don't want that, we don't want that. But then, then it's like, in the past when I would do that, that's what people would enjoy and what they would click on and stuff. So it's uh -huh. been, it, we are currently in a stage here where I am trying to transform my channel into something different. And, and how? And it's been really hard. Because and how are you doing that? What, what, what do you define as different and how are you getting there? Because I'm still seeing a lot of the same old, same old. The same old, same old, and you addressing all the negativity. Which, like, if I recall, the one thing you said you wanted to change is that you wanted to change the community that was surrounding your channel. And yet here we are still addressing the negativity. So we're not really doing that, are we? Because I feel like just because I'm detached with who I used to be doesn't mean, like, everyone else is. Everyone still right. brings up old Amberlynn. Right. Old past situations. Right. Who they used to be, et cetera, et cetera. And it's really hard. And it's been really hard for me to grow and move on honestly thank you so clearly much for hi i okay. mean that was like some good good self-awareness to some extent like this this idea that she's like realizes that she is unable to move on from this because that's the thing like if if you really have changed 
then like let yourself continue moving on. Who ca- who cares if everybody else hasn't moved on yet? Like you move on and eventually they'll get tired of talking to themselves, you know? Do you have any plans to move still? Oh yeah, where are you going? Is that kind of on pause? Do you have like an announcement city? We'd love to know. Oh see, this is another thing. I'm like, if you keep up with Amber Lynn everywhere, including Instagram, where these questions are being asked. In Instagram Q&As, granted, this might have been answered after this video was already filmed, but she has said she's not going to say where she's going yet. She's focused on getting weight loss surgery. She needs to get weight loss surgery first so that she can get healthy, and then she's going to prioritize moving out of Kentucky. And see, this is why also this is also annoying, is because none of these things or none of these questions are new. (laughs) If you've been around long enough... Or if, j- if you've just been paying attention at all, period. Yeah, I totally, uh, so many people want me to move. I totally get it, like, seeing the same, like, environment. Like, moving vlogs are so fun. Are and they? I wish I could have done moving vlogs when I moved here. But I Which also, I don't know where this drama came from. I'm guessing probably on, like, a Reddit or something that I haven't looked at or, <laughs> or read. But she's been getting a lot of questions about who has or hasn't helped her move in the past and things like that. So I feel like this is a curious thing for her to be answering in light of knowing that right now on her Instagram Q&As, a lot of people are asking her about how she's managed to move during different times in her life. Um, I think, you know, when, like, her and Becky moved into this apartment, but also, like, when she moved with Destiny back in the day and all of that. I literally had to move so fast. It was, like, two to three days before I had to go under for invasive surgery because I had cancer. So I didn't film any of it at all. Uh-huh. Um, but with this next move, definitely going to happen. So I okay, was work. going to move. I, I had a spot I wanted. Um, I was planning it. The whole nine. Some personal things started happening. Some health things started happening. Some personal things that were happening offline that I can't talk about. There were things that were preventing me from moving, especially like number one high. I was on a lease. I don't like breaking contracts. So I was waiting for that to end. And then when it finally did, um, that's when like the health thing started happening. And I realized I really want weight loss surgery. Like that is Uh number one. Love her just like talking about breaking leases and things like that as though that's not something that like the, the everyday person understands or can relate to. Like, like we get it. Lots of people wait until their lease is over before they move. We understand. We got it, girly. On my list. And where I want to move is drastically far away from the Drastically? So I had to choose between moving yeah, see, I already surgery. told you and all I of this. My health first. I chose weight loss surgery first. Yeah, so, I, I already told you all this because she literally just recently answered it in a QA. I don't have it screenshotted because I didn't think it was interesting enough to note, but like, this is why this kind of video is annoying to me personally. Once I get weight loss surgery, once I heal from weight loss surgery, once I get the A OK to move, then I will be moving. And it will be out of state. I'm just not so sure that I'm going to be sharing um, where I'm moving. I mean. uh, Until I'm actually, like, there and settled and happy and thriving. I was like, people are probably going to find out because you're not good at keeping secrets. Let's let's just be honest. I've been living abroad, specifically Japan, for coming up on eight years now. And um, I've been using your videos with my friends back in the States as a way to kind of keep bonding with them and kind of watching your journey together, especially through the pandemic. And I was just wondering, I know you mentioned you have a of state friends before. I just wonder how you bond and keep contact with them. Anyway, love you. Bye. If she she has out of state friends, they're all people that watch her videos. According to I don't know an Instagram Q and A that I also just talked about in a video. She said all of her closest friends were once her viewers, so that's how they watch her too. They they bond just like you do with your friends. I love that you bond with your friends over me. Like that's so cute. I do have out of state friends, and I will say it sucks. Like it sucks so bad that like everyone you love or everyone you want to be around are the people that are far away from you. And <laughs> I just make sure, like, it's not like a daily thing. Cause I uh-huh. know we're all adults now. Like it's not 
like high school where you can like text every day like you hey. can, you can you know we're adults we have our own things going on but what <laughs> what do you mean you can't text your friends every day is that against the rules i gotta i gotta reevaluate some texting relationships that i have with people i'm sorry what I'm not allowed to text my friends all, every day just because I'm an adult. That's news to me. But like weekly check-ins, yeah, I understand it's super hard to like keep that like connection when it's long distance, but just make sure you check in with one another and do things together. I just wanted to say that I used to be a hater and I used to consume a lot of the content from reaction channels. And I think that the negativity really impacted my life. And I decided one day to stop consuming it all oh, together good for and you. Really help me. And I think that says something. Um, that's it. <laughs> Uh, so I normally like skip over ones sure. like this. Um, I normally just like listen to them and I'll reply back. I'll like type because I like to just respond to like questions. Right. But I will say I'm going to keep this in here because this is actually something that I completely relate to as well because there was a time where I would watch reaction channels all the time. <laughs> I was gonna. I was. I was waiting for her to say it because I was just like, I, I appreciate that that person said it. You know, I think if you find some kind of negative energy coming into your life, like to the extent that you can, you should leave that negativity at the door. You <laughs> like nobody's making you watch things that make you feel negative, right? Like you don't have to do that. But it does make me think a lot about Amberlynn Reed, who needs to hear that message because okay, so right now she's saying she doesn't watch reaction channels anymore. Uh, I, I can tell you that, like, that could be true, but give it give it time, and I'm sure she'll return to it, right? She's frequently said in the past, I don't watch reaction channels, and then, like, proven that she does, in fact, watch them. Like, it, it's fine. She can watch whatever she wants. But even if we're not talking about reaction channels, just think about the amount of time and energy that Amberlynn gives to negativity, right? Like, like, you don't have to do that. And I hope you listen to this viewer of yours who says that you don't have, like she said, oh, this is negative for me. I'm gonna stop engaging because you can do it too, Amberlynn. I believe in you. You can stop engaging with the negativity. Because I was curious, like, what rumors <laughs> do I have to clear up? What's being said? You don't have now? to do anything. Like, I noticed my mental health was so bad. The negativity that reaction channels create and their community creates, it really is detrimental to people's mental health without a doubt. Sh I have had so many people reach sure. out to me and say this exact thing. So I just want to say thank you so much for Work. just being <laughs> empowering. And uh, I, w I will say to that extent that like, for the most part, I cover a wide variety of people on the YouTubies, right? And outside of like my videos about Chantal, and even then, but outside of her specifically, I would say actually most of the people that watch my channel, the comments are very respectful. There are people that find their way in there that don't have anything nice to say. I don't think that's a reflection of me personally. Uh, but, you know, there there are people. I'm not going to act like there aren't. But, like, overwhelmingly, the people who watch my channel aren't negative, don't, don't have negativity in their life. And, like, I can't speak for other reaction channels because I don't watch other reaction channels. Somebody one time told me they thought that that was shady, and it's literally nothing to do with the other reaction channels. I just, like, literally can watch this stuff once on my own and that's enough. You know what I'm saying? Like, peace and love to every other Amberlynn Reed reaction channel, but, like, for me, once is enough. <laughs> you feel me? Um, but anyways, my point being is just that, like, I don't encourage negativity. I hope y'all aren't feeling negative watching my content. I'm just here to have a good time and laugh and giggle at the silly or maybe sometimes boring things that Amberlynn Reed does on her channel, you know? You feel me? You feel me now, Mr. Krabs? Telling yourself, you know what? I know what is causing this. I know what is causing my mental health to be bad. So I am going to step away Work. and stop yes. engaging. And I, I do encourage that. That is powerful. And I just wish you nothing but the best. And thank you so Same. much for opening up. Meow.
Wait! <laughs> Wait! <laughs> that just brought me so much, like, pure joy. That brought me so much joy. That was amazing. Thank you so much to the, to the person who sent her that. So, I'm talking to a 21-year-old, and my friends think it's wrong. I lost my virginity to a 24-year-old. I'm 16 years old. And I was just wondering your opinion on it and the age gap. So, I think it's fine with 21 years. I would never speak to a 16-year-old when I was 21. But I was just wondering what you think. Sorry, I... Wait, you're 16 speaking to a 21-year-old? Wait, what? You, as a 21-year-old, 20 year old not speak to a 16-year-old. Wait, what? I think you might have answered your own question. Wait, that what? That 21-year-old needs to find someone else their age. Hi, everyone. Wait, what? I was just curious. I'm sorry, what are people, what? <laughs> what is, I feel like that person had to be trying to catch her in some kind of trap, because what was that question? I'm Lynn. Do you have any tips on how to not give into temptation and how not to binge? Um, I hope you're having a good day and a happy stuff. Temptation is hard, um, without a doubt. Mm -hmm. The biggest advice I can give is just to accept the discomfort that feeling <gasps> you get. Oh yeah, we gotta sit with the discomfort. It's been it's been a while since Amberlynn brought up sitting with the discomfort. Are y'all ready to get back into that? <laughs> Are y'all ready to remember that word? Discomfort. Let's just sit with our discomfort and listen to the rest of her answer of this question when like you really really want to like overeat or like you said binge um whatever it may be just like that bad feeling you get like I, I know like it's hard to explain um so I might be explaining it kind of bad but that just like that feeling inside of you where it feels like oh my god I need to have this oh my god just don't do it don't do it mm -hmm. when you get that feeling do something you love instead like literally stand up Leave the spot that you're currently at, walk away from it, and do a different activity. It could be literally anything. Turn on a TV show, start doing jumping jacks, listen to your favorite song, dance around to it, color, anything, until that feeling passes. And I promise you, it, it will amaze you how strong you actually are. And I know you can do it. And thank you so much for the question. Hi. Um All right. I've sat with my discomfort. <laughs> I sat with it. It's here. We're and and now we're moving on. <laughs> and now we're moving on. Hi, I'm Berlin. I'm a new viewer of yours, and I've been watching you for like two months now. And my question is, why do you keep focusing on like the negativity instead of the positivity? Yeah. Thank also, though, can you imagine coming into Amberlynn Reed's channel two months ago? <laughs> like, like what? What is that about? How does that happen? I mean, I guess the same could be said if you're like a new subscriber of mine in the past two months. Like, you come here and like have no idea what's going on. But yeah, could I'm I'm just like wow, that's such a fascinating concept for me because like how do you just jump in two months ago <laughs> and then and then jump in and then listen to the negativity, you know? Because like for the past month or two, I feel like that's all it's been on her channel. So like, what about that was like, yeah, I'm gonna subscribe to this girl unless you want to stay for the negativity. Welcome to my channel. I hope that you stay. I have tried to talk about this in the past, and I think it's really just because I feel like the negative negativity is so much louder it's there the most and because you um, amplify like, it you give it a voice you acknowledge it you you are amplifying it that's why it's so much louder that's like literally just there in your face and I do talk a bit about this in therapy and it's very common for people who went through a lot like a lot of trauma in the past to like focus a lot on the negative especially when you're suffering with like anxiety and other things like I have a lot that I'm like not talking about that's normal for any youtuber and I don't mean to like use that as any excuse or whatever but I just get really overwhelmed and it's just like constant it's just like I feel like I'm constantly emotionally and mentally like beat up on and it's really really hard for me I mean, um, I just feel like it's easier to. I guess, I guess that that could, I could understand that to some extent. I could understand that, like, because of the things she's experienced in her past, she's just used to focusing on the negativity. 
um, I think the thing is, is that like we're we're at the point now where you can acknowledge that that's what's going on. So like, what are we doing to work on to change that? You know, because it's like I can I can recognize that different behaviors of mine are due to my general anxiety disorder, right? What I usually am typically trying to work on is like, okay, I can I can connect those two things together. I can also realize that like that behavior isn't good for me. So like now that I understand that it's connected to my anxiety, like what am I gonna do to change that behavior in the future? You know what I'm saying? I feel like she misses that sometimes. Stand up for myself sometimes than to ignore it. And I'm trying so hard to work on it and I'm uh, never right. going to be perfect. Work. I'm never going to just completely, utterly, 100% ignore the hate, but I know that I can get better at reacting and reacting let's, less. Let's less do it. Less. Yeah, That's let's get to, let's get to. And I know it's important to my supporters who follow me, who love me and yes. who like me and who want to see me do well and to focus more on the positivity. Work. So I know that's like a flaw that I have that I need to work on. All right. And I promise I will start doing better. I like that self-awareness. Perfect. And thank you so much for the question. Okay, you guys? It was, it was some good self-awareness, but I will say even in this video, she's addressed <laughs> some negativity. Even on her Instagram Q&As, she's addressed some negativity. So let's just, you know, the self-awareness is there. Now we just got to put it into action. Guys, so we're going to do one more Work. question. So let's see who the lucky interviewer is. All right. Thank you guys so much for this. Um, okay. I just literally, I was like, I'm so excited to hear what this last question was. <laughs> it was so boring. I don't give a shit about it. So... Uh, here we are! We're at the end of the video! Surprise! Um, I hope the interviewers get excited when they see that I chose their question. Thank you guys so much for being wonderful, and I will see you in my next video. Bye. Well, there you go. This was unexpectedly a very long video, so hopefully I can uh, edit it down so it's not as long for y'all. But I, like I said earlier, I do know a lot of you do actually like my long form content. So get into it. I hope you all enjoyed today's video. I actually had a lot of fun reacting to this one. So I hope you did too. If you're brand new to my channel, make sure to subscribe down below. Hit the bell button so you get a notification every single time I post a new video. Make sure to leave me a comment, hit like, click share, and follow Follow me on all of my social media. I had so much fun today. I hope you did too. And I'll see you all next time. Bye.